So I misplaced and or lost the first couple clips of this video, which is the tail end of the vanity build, but the beginning of this is going to be building an exposed medicine cabinet for the space. So she has a medicine cabinet in this space, and you'll see photos of it. It's sunk into the wall, and basically I'm just going to be removing that and then putting this on top of it. She wanted it exposed and with a lot extra storage. So those two longer pieces are just scraps of ply I had. They're actually walnut veneer ply, and they're four and a half inches wide by a little over three feet long, and I cut a couple dados into them, so I have three stationary shelves, two stationary shelves, and then the top, which will hold the whole piece together. There will also be adjustable shelves on this, and then I cut a half inch rabbit on the back for a backer, and then I just cut out... Um, plywood slabs for the three shelves so those are only four inches wide and then those will be um, I think this ended up being about 18 inches wide so those were with the, uh, the thickness of the dado is probably like 17 and a half so once I had all that mocked up I cut the backer and the backer is um, a lesser grade of plywood than the birch veneer ply I usually use but it's what I had on hand and since it's for the backer you could sand it and paint it and you won't be able to notice it's a lesser grade of ply um, on projects like this and in, in order to make this out of the birch veneer I would have had to buy an entire new sheet of plywood so um, I used what I had and then the sides of this medicine cabinet are going to be faced the same way the cabinet drawers of the vanity are with that quarter inch MDF. So I was just cutting um, those pieces down and then fitting them onto my two side panels. So the bottom chunk was, was pretty thick. I think it was about four inches by the same width of the cabinet. And then the top piece was about three. And then these side pieces were an inch thick. And then this is just fitting them onto place to make sure everything works. And then I changed up my order of operations a little bit for this project because I like to um, screw these cabinets together when they're drying. But since this is going to have exposed sides, screws wouldn't work. However, because I'm putting that detailing on the side, if I glue it now and then add the detailing, um, I could hide those screw holes. There's also going to be a towel rack at the bottom of this cabinet, so I pre-drilled that hole in the bottom in order for, to um, put a dowel in there, and you'll end up seeing that that was a futile effort once, once I get to that part again. So once that was dry, it was just a matter of taking all those pieces and um, tacking them onto the sides with glue, and then I'll use some brads and right here is where I was super confused for a minute because I used the wrong size bottom. Um, I used the cutoff instead of the actual piece and once I figured out that that was wrong I swapped it out and I'm just attaching this with 5 8 inch brads and then since this is going to be hanging on the wall I wanted a nice curve to the bottom of it so it doesn't stick out so much right by where you'll be using the sink. So I had um, a net for fishing which had a nice kind of oval bulbous curve to it and I used that as the basis for the curve on the bottom of the cabinet and then I cut it out with so not gonna lie I've had this jigsaw for quite a while it doesn't cut super great but that's probably due to the fact that I have thrown it a few times but luckily with the belt sander it's easy to clean up the curves the most um, inaccurate part of it is it just cuts kind of at an angle it will cut fairly straight but the blade tracks somewhat at an angle so like I said, it's easy to clean up that curve. You can see right at the top where that curve meets the shelf, the, the angle I'm talking about. But um, with, a, with a careful hand, that's easy to clean up with a belt sander. The belt sander itself can sometimes really wreck projects, but if you're careful with it, it's a, it's a lifesaver on stuff like this. And then I also just kindly kind of went over the top and cleaned up that face because I'm going to be um, skinning it out with some, some pieces of wood as well. So then the top of this cabinet is going to be finished off with some crown molding. And crown molding is one of those things that if you don't do it a ton, it could be a little bit of a, a pain. But luckily this cabinet is not reaching the top of the ceiling, so I didn't really have to worry about that added angle. 
So I basically just cut the right angle on that long piece. This is all scrap I'd have from someone's house. I removed it in order to, they were um, refinishing the walls and I came in and removed it, kept it. And it, stuff like that works out great for these little projects. And then I just cut the right angles on um, the two edges and I could just cut flat ends on those once I get all the measurements right. And the key to, to crown molding is to remember to cut it upside down on your chop saw. So once I had that measurement, I could cut the other angle on that long piece. And then this is the piece I cut the two angles on the one side. You can see I left it long, so I'll just cut that flat piece off on the radial arm saw. And then I just opted to glue this together and attach it on the table. It's easier to do it this way than trying to keep everything aligned on the cabinet. So once I had a few brads in that corner with some glue, I could just slide it right onto my cabinet. And then this is just solely decorative, so I just placed it on the top about where it looked good to the eye and then sunk a bunch of brads in it into, into the whole piece. And the nice thing about crown molding on something that's being painted is similar to anything else. If there are some hairline gaps, you could always fill them with caulk and paint them and you'll never see them. And then the way I drill for the adjustable shelves holes is with um, pegboard and a drill bit. It's kind of the easiest way to do it. And then this is some pine scrap I had laying around my shop. It's really thin. It's barely a quarter inch. And I cut that to one inch strips because now with the thickness um, of that decoration on the outside of my panel, that three quarter inch plywood is about an inch thick. So I cut that to about an inch and then I'll just go around and face all of that ply with this. Um, I could have used veneer veneer tape which I've been using a lot in my projects it would have made life easier however like I said the thickness is now over three quarters of an inch so that veneer tape wouldn't be wide enough to um to do this plus you'll kind of, I don't know if you'll actually be able to see it in the video but these strips ended up overhanging the inside of the cabinet a little bit which is nice because then you don't ever have to worry about your shelves um, falling out the front of the cabinet it is a bathroom, so there is stickier things in there. Something sticks to the shelf and you go to tug on it, it won't be able to pull out. So then covering the curve was a little bit of a challenge. Ideally, that, that edge banding veneer would have been perfect for that because you could follow curves with it, but like I said, it's just too skinny. So I had some poplar laying around and I made some really thin strips of veneer. They're about a 16th inch thick. And um, on my table saw, and I use, once they're that thin, you can bend them. So I use that to, to um, cover that ply on the curve. And I quickly realized that after adding that pine on the top, at that curve, at the end of the pine had to follow the curve that was going into where I was covering with the poplar. So you could see me quickly kind of chiseling out that curve and sanding it in order to get it to fit and then attaching everything with tape. The other side, I anticipated that problem and already finished the curve before I applied that poplar. Same process with the tape. Keep everything in place while it dries, and then that turned out nicely as well. And then this is the, the mock-up of that medicine cabinet, ready, just about ready for paint. And this is just kind of cleaning up. So the bottom, I cut, um, a piece to, to cover up the veneer on the bottom. I had a scrap piece of poplar and you're going to see I'm going to cut it kind of into a C shape. So I started by cutting a bunch of curves into either end and then I was going to set it on my saw blade. The, the part I wanted to remove, put a feather board on there and then I could raise the blade until it broke through the top side of that poplar and run it to the end. That piece would come out and then I have this odd shape that fits nicely on the bottom covers up that ply. I just attached that with some glue and some brads as well. So this is the part where being proactive and drilling that hole ended up not working. It was just set too far back in the in the bottom of that cabinet. So I propped it up with a piece of wood and I have this thin oak 
I drew a curve on it and then I there's not a ton of footage of this I think I lost some footage on this build I was kind of rushing between a couple projects but I drew that curve and then you could see that slot I just cut that to the width I wanted and then I was gonna drill out the hole for the slot on the drill press and then cut out that little piece you could see there on the bandsaw made two of those and then that that dowel could rest in there and also be removed I ended up gluing and and uh, putting some brads into that oak and so I usually use those L-shaped um, pegs for putting on shelves but they only had the uh, gold ones and I wanted silver so they had the barrel shaped ones and I actually like these better you could cut your shelves a little bit wider because you don't have to worry about the thickness of that that bracket so that those just slide right into the peg holes and then um, I just cut four four slabs of ply I'll then um, edge band the fronts of them and then they'll have all these adjustable shelves so with the medicine cabinet pretty much done I switch gears back to the vanity just to finish it up so those face panels are attached with some hot glue and I'm going to trace on the edges of those with a pencil where that cabinet lies just in case things get thrown off kilter then I could take those screws I have out and pop those fronts off once the fronts are popped off I'll eventually add glue but I like to make sure they fit in there um, without the glue first because these things even if they shift a little bit your reveals will, will show that but you could see once I pop that glue off I could realign using those screws put the faces back on then I'm marking center simply by drawing two marks with my diagonals right in the center of the cabinet and I could drill for the poles the poles are just very simple silver knobs same thing with the cabinet I usually mark down about six or so inches and and mark for the poles and then it's just a matter of matter of putting that hardware in with the drawers since the cabinet is so thick with those front faces um, I ended up having to use a spade bit on the inside to countersink a little bit so the hardware went all the way through but then it, that worked out fine with that side panel glued up all I had to do now was cut um, the toe kick out so I just put it in place and drew a mark on the inside and cut that toe kick out on my radial right arm saw and cleaned it up the same way I did with um, the toe kick for the plywood panels so the next part is a little hard to see in the video but the one downside to the lap joints and the grooves for those splines is you're left with a mark where those grooves are and my lap joints weren't um, completely flush on this one end of the cabinet so you'll see I just you, right there is where you could see where that lap joint isn't super flush so I had some leftover thin stock from the veneer I cut for the curve of that panel and I simply cut a little piece would glue it in place and then once that dried on the top and the bottom or where those two marks are if this sides against the wall you don't have to fix it um, and once that was in place I just planed it down before painting I don't actually think you see that in this video but once that was glued in place and planed down you couldn't even tell that there was a patch there So I'm not going to show a ton of the painting because it's boring. Um, this is a Kills paint. I like Kills. It's a paint and primer. It's basic white. And what I do is I don't really sand before I prime. I sand a little bit, but this this lumber, the poplar and the veneer grade, um, the high end veneer grade birch ply is pretty smooth, even from the store. So I'll paint it, and this is a water based paint. I wasn't going to paint that inside cubby but then I decided to just do it which was fun because I had already painted the face frame so what I like to do on cabinets like this is like I said I will paint them and then in between the first and second coat I'll sand the whole surface lightly with 150 grit sandpaper which is going to knock down all the fuzzies and the grain that's risen from the water based paint and that's the biggest amount of sanding you'll have um, this cabinet ended up getting three to four coats depending on which part of the cabinet it was and I lightly sand like that in between each coat but once you go from the set first to the second coat you've really kind of smoothed out the whole surface and everything looks good so like I said this whole thing got about three to four coats 
And like I said, this is just sanding in between coats. You're not applying a ton of pressure, just lightly sanding and taking down all those high spots. And this is what everything looked like painted. So for the install, it was a very tight space because it's a bathroom. I couldn't really film, but I did get some photos. Um, this is what uh, the, the vanity looked like before. And she is, I re-put that sink top back in place. This is um, that medicine cabinet, and then she's replacing it out later with stone. So the first thing I had to do was obviously unhook all of the plumbing and, and sl slide that top off. And this was fun because they, they must have put those valves on after they attached the vanity. So I had to go through with a spade bit and cut bigger holes in order to even remove the old one. Once I took the top off, I found this kind of row of, this is the spade bit cutting those holes bigger so I could remove everything and once I took the top off I found this roll of row of I guess they were trying to find a stud I don't know I've never really seen that before but and this is the cavity from where the old medicine cabinet came out which was nice because now you know exactly where the studs are and I just aligned my cabinet up with those valves and drew some marks and then drilled um, I think it was two and a half inch holes so that everything could slide into place. And there were escutcheons I put back on there that covered most of these holes. And then um, same thing for the drain pipe. That was more like a three inch hole. This is the side, I thought I was gonna have to describe this to the wall, but this was one of those rare, rare circumstances where my panel fit perfectly. Once everything was in place, I could drill it from the inside. You could see those screws, so that's all drilled into place. Like I said, I didn't have to scribe that to the wall, which was nice. The other side I did, but I don't have any pictures of that. And then, then this is just anchoring the vanity into the wall using those pre-drilled holes. <laughs> And that's what everything looked like once it was in place. I just put that sink top back on. Like I said, she's going to be switching it out. And then that is the, the medicine cabinet mounted on the wall. And the, the piece I used for the towel rack, you can kind of see it at the bottom on, the, on there. I actually ended up using a piece of PVC, which I figure will work out. If it gets wet, it doesn't really matter, and it's already white. And that's everything put back together. And then there's just a bunch of pictures of the finished piece, and that will be the end of this video.